Playtime with Piercy's is a weird game, but a FNAF game that I genuinely believe made an experience unlike any other. To me, this was really difficult, which you can definitely see the results of since by the end I had more than 60 deaths. And by the time I actually did beat the game, I was basically on the brink of tears. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, so easy. This is the easiest game of my life. We did it. <laughs> We did it. However, although this was definitely not an easy experience to get through, most of the struggle just came from not understanding certain gameplay elements. So, with replaying the entire playthrough once again, how was the Playtime with Piercy's game actually? To find out, let's go through this jumbled up experience together and see what it has in store for us. Before we even start the first night, the way this game is structured is pretty simple but something I definitely enjoyed. At the beginning of every night, there will usually be a cutscene to further progress the plot that's happening around us, with the art style being something that I definitely would not have expected from a horror game as it felt very reminiscent of older Flash animations like those from Ed's World and the various others that populated Newgrounds during the early 2000s. This is not saying that the art style is bad or even outdated, not at all. Just that its visuals very much reminded me of flash animations from my childhood, which is definitely a plus in my opinion. Definitely leading to a much more comedic side towards its storytelling and presentation, much like the one at a Flumpty series did. To start off the first cutscene, the character we're playing as is named Nick, who previously worked in a location called Piercy's Playhouse. However, for whatever reason, we were laid off. But ever since, the business has been going downhill to the point that they were actually going bankrupt and had to be shut down just a week prior to the phone call that we're currently having. Which is when our old boss gives us a weird offer. They will pay us $250 to stay overnight at Percy's Playhouse in order to protect the various different animatronics and anything else that might be valuable from being stolen before they're sold off in an auction. We of course say yes since this feels like a pretty simple thing to do. Get paid to sit around making sure no one breaks into a building? Sounds like easy money. But that's before we find out what exactly awaits us within this location. We don't have a phone guy or anyone telling us what to do within this place, but instead just these tip boxes to let us know what to do each night. I may not enjoy tip boxes personally within games, but I'll give it a pass for now. Our first objective is simply click on the box to find a pal Percy and a pal boy. With the pal Percy, it works kind of like a Tamagotchi, where we need to take care of this dog inside of it. There are three mini games we can do to make him happy. Feed him some bones, fill up his bowl with water, or just play catch with him. Pretty simple for now. We then get told that if we don't interact with our pal Percy for too long, it will get cranky and begin to beep really loudly. I'll talk more about this in a few seconds. The second feature we unlock is the Pal Boy, which is this game's version of the camera systems. Honestly, this thing is going to be completely useless for the first few nights, so you can just ignore it for now. There will now be a demonstration of two puppets coming from either the two vents next to us. When the cat comes out, we need to put down anything we are holding in order to stare at them for a few seconds since they are an attention seeker. While the opposite is true for the moose, who needs you to keep something up in order to avoid looking at them. This was a pretty cool way of trying to introduce the mechanics to us as it feels like a kid's game, the way that this is presented only making you fall for a false sense of security, thinking that the rest of this game is going to be a cakewalk due to how simplistic this take was. And oh boy! Are you going to be in a lot of pain real soon? Now, for something important to know, this game doesn't revolve around the 6am feature that nearly every single FNAF fan game centers around, but instead is goal-based. There were two other fan games that I played previously that were goal-based as well, which were JR's and Tealerland, with one not doing this that effectively in my opinion, while the other made us absolutely terrifying. So at this point, it was really hit or miss the way this would feel later on. But for now, the only goal we need to do for each night is very simple. Make our pal Piercy reach their max happiness. It will change each night how many times we need to do this, but for the very beginning, we just need to play these three minigames 30 times while avoiding the animatronics that will come out from the vents. Learning that their names are Charlie Cat 
and Mother Moose. Although this game isn't time-based, it's still time to the top to let you know how long you've been playing for, which I feel only gives you more replayability within this game as you have the chance to replay each section to make the time you beat even faster. After a while, you should be able to beat this night, which isn't difficult at all, but we are then thrown into an after-night minigame. At least, that's what I'm describing it as, since it really does feel like another game using the same art style. For the first night, we need to sell all the animatronics with the same offer that we present, with us needing to keep rejecting others until we get the same one. What's nerve-wracking about this first experience is every time we reject an offer, we need to put down a code, which isn't the worst part. It's when this happens. We aren't alone as this clown, Charlie Cat, will walk around us as we need to sell these parts. When we hear them getting close, we will need to go under the desk in order to hide from them, with us being able to see and even hear them walking past us each time, which only adds to how freaky this part can get, especially if you have headphones blasting to hear things more clearly. Once we make it through half the offers, Charlie Cat will begin to stay around much longer, with the computer screen also having more issues. Glitching will happen more often, the code we need gets longer, and these weird pop-ups start happening that we need to close out of. Eventually, we will make it through. But this was just the easiest night. It only gets harder from here. Starting off, we will notice this TV with four colors, which is simply known as a Simon Says Machine. This is related to Farmer Felix, who will walk from one side of the hallway to the other, needing us to focus on his eyes. Whatever eye color he has, we will need to press on this machine with the colors on it to match. A very similar concept from the Pop Goes game from 2016. Nothing else happens on this night as it just introduces one new animatronic, still being a relatively easy game. When we make it to the end of the night, we get dropped off to the attack of the Space Dog arcade game. I don't know if I'm just going crazy, but I feel as though this character has to be a reference to the run game from Cool Math Games that every kid used to play back in the day. Maybe I'm just overthinking it though. Anyways, this is actually an alien shooter with our goal being to beat the high score of this game, but of course, it can't be that simple, as every so often, we'll hear something behind us moving, which will be Mother Moose. When this happens, we will need to just turn around and flash her with our flashlight to make her go away. There are also three power-ups we can get to increase our chances of beating the high score. The hearts give us one more life, a shield blocks all damage, and the rapid fire makes us just shoot faster. With all of these, this minigame isn't that difficult, at least not until Mother Moose gets angry at us for reaching the halfway mark, needing us to flash her twice before causing her to run away. Though, this doesn't really change much since the game is paused when we look behind us, so this is just a time waster more than anything else. This is a pretty easy space game, but I enjoyed the different changes in gameplay that I was trying to go for. <laughs> The third night, things finally start to get more difficult, as there are now a total of 5 animatronics we need to focus on. The previous 3 that we already mentioned, and the 2 new ones that will occasionally pop up at the door. Percy Poodle is someone who will slowly walk towards the office and isn't really something we need to worry about until he begins banging on the door. When this happens, we can't use any other device and must hold the door down so he isn't able to break it open. With there also being a smaller poodle that will occasionally pop out of nowhere who will just open the door for us. When this happens, we just need to click the door to close it. Although this is nowhere as difficult as what will come later, especially on the next night, this is just giving a taste that this game has a lot more elements that's going to be presented, which is something I will be touching on soon. When we finally make it through night 3 though, we now have to play through various different minigames in order to turn on the power. I just want to state that I absolutely love these different changes in gameplay that is shown after each night. Mostly because a lot of these newer ones are showing a lot of simple games but throwing you off by the thing that is always presented behind you. And in this case, 
Rowan Rat, who is someone we have not seen yet. We'll hear him behind us as he seems to be digging towards us, which is when we simply need to pour our flashlight at him. Halfway through beating these smaller minigames, Rowan will begin to get angry and start needing us to flash him twice in two different tunnels to be able to make him run away. Not only that, the minigames get much harder as the previously simple ones have new elements presented, whether it's the new colors making things hard to see or adding these new robots to throw pellets at you. Things get much more interesting and can get stressful since you're so used to things being timed. By this, I mean that you don't want to take your time even while knowing things on a computer you're working on get paused when you look behind you. Not only that, you're so used to every single FNAF fan game you play focusing so heavily on time-based elements that if you aren't able to do a certain thing quick enough, something bad might happen. At least that was a feeling I got when I was trying to rush just to rush without any reasoning, forgetting constantly that there was no incentive for me to actually try to finish this section quickly. After being able to beat every mini game and turning the power back on, we make it to the next night. The next night begins with a cutscene. For some reason, our character, Nick, seems to not think things have been that bad, even with the various different animatronics coming after us each night, chalking us up to just the animatronics malfunctioning like you do, though they have noticed that the pal Percy has been acting kind of strange, almost changing every night, like I said, strange. Which is when we leave only to find a disc on the floor. We get the option to take it home or just leave it here. Of course, we take it and try to use it at home, but we aren't able to view it when we put it in. However, when we leave, this warning pops up on a screen regarding the pal Percy toys, reporting that the toy has been shown to be a serious threat to children and giving refunds to anyone who has it. For whatever reason, it is dangerous and must be disposed of immediately. What's important to note is that we, we see this, the players, but not Nick, the one who we were playing as. So we now have the knowledge that these things are dangerous while Nick is unknowingly continuing to play with it throughout his shifts. We then get thrown into the office once again, and this is when the camera system finally becomes useful. And when I start to lose my mind. <laughs> Rowan Rat is the final true animatronic introduced, which would push the simplistic gameplay from effortless to be something stressful. Within the camera systems, we could press either A or D to open up the radar system. It will usually have four cameras online, but once Rowan gets active, one of these will change to indicate which room he is in. Thankfully, we don't need to guess where we will go as the cameras are numbered. Once we see that he's on the hunt, we simply need to go to that camera in order to flash him, causing him to run away. If it was only this that we need to worry about, then it really wouldn't be that bad, but there's a certain annoying little poodle we had to worry about. There isn't just one poodle though, as there's actually a whole bunch of them scattered around, with our first introduction to these things being earlier on, from when they would try to open up the office door. They're called the playful poodles altogether, with the one that's showing up on this night randomly showing up at the camera system somewhere. The game will let us know by giving us a warning next to the pal boy icon in the bottom left. Once active, we need to go find them on the camera system and stare at them. Failure to do so will cause them to shut down the cameras and the power permanently. Which might as well be an automatic game over since we will have no way of stopping Rowan without them. Now, let me explain why this small introduction of these two demons made my experience playing this game into a nightmare. Let's quickly review what we need to do to survive each night. For one, the vents would occasionally have either a cat or a moose come out needing us to either stare at the cat or keep something up for the moose. The cat will be important to talk about very shortly. With the Summon Says minigame, it's relatively simple to take care of, so let's ignore that. Piercy himself needs us to physically keep our mouse on the door to lock it so we aren't able to do anything else. The reason why this part was so stressful was due to two main reasons. For one, my inexperience of not understanding what to do at first 
that's fair. After a few failed attempts, we should be able to get through this section like we usually do, right? <laughs> right? Well, that isn't the case as it took a lot of tries to really find the right method to try to get through this one night. The second main reason why this was so stressful was due to the mechanic of the other animatronics. We can't focus on the camera system since the cat will need us to drop everything so often, as well as Piercy forcing us to keep the door closed on him manually. Already, these two things makes dealing with Rowan annoying. However, what's worse is that he has no indication at least to my knowledge of playing through this section twice, of warning the player of when he's coming towards us. Yes, this part could be seen as difficult since we simply need to just struggle the various different animatronics while we wait for the night to end. <laughs> but wait, just wait a little bit. This game isn't time-based, but instead goal-based. The worst part of this had to be the fact that we couldn't just hold on until the night ended, but instead needed to play with the pal Percy so many times while surviving and managing the camera system. Difficulty spikes aren't uncommon within FNAF fan games or even the official FNAF entries. Usually the spike happens on the third or fourth night within each game, where the first two or three are extremely easy, most of the time, barely needing us to do anything to survive. Then suddenly, the game's difficulty will switch to hard mode, with one of the most infamous examples of this being the return to Bloody Nights. It's kind of crazy the amount of people who complain about how hard that one game was when the third night happened, though it's not unreasonable as it truly became difficult to get through just that one spike. There are multiple reasons on why these spikes could occur with the most important one to recognize being the new variable introduced, usually in the form of an animatronic. Not being able to fully understand a new character's mechanic and how to play around them can be tricky to do, however, in this case, it was just a hard section, almost feeling like every single animatronic was designed perfectly to piss you off when this night happened. Now, if you thought that this night was difficult when you played it, <laughs> well, let's just say we haven't seen just how sadistic the creator of this game can really be. And I mean it. Once we finally are able to somehow not only survive but also complete the pal Percy, we make it to the Afternight minigame. Here, we just need a repair from our Felix since he's been malfunctioning quite a bit. Instead of just manually fixing him with wires or something more mechanical looking, we play through four minigames to simulate that feeling. Varying from matching the gears, playing Simon Says, to generating the power. Of course, it wouldn't be just that simple, as the playful poodles are bored and want to play with you. Every so often, we will need to exit outside to click on one of these poodles before continuing. And after finishing up half the mini games, we simply need to click on them twice to make them go away. This section is pretty simple as well. The afternight mini games aren't meant to be difficult, just meant to change up things every so often, and I do enjoy that. And honestly, <laughs> I like simple tasks, so this kind of thing made me. Have fun. We lose a lot, and most of the time it's because of Rolling Rat. I hate this thing so much, and not only does it get more aggressive on this night, every single other animatronic also decides they don't want you to have fun, so suffer. Nothing new happens on this night other than understanding that the creator's game loves to make people cry. So after a lot, and I mean a lot of attempts, we finally make it to the end, where we are able to see one final cutscene. We get a call from the boss, letting us know that they called someone to repair the animatronics, but they were still broken for some reason, which is when he gives us one final task before we are able to finally leave this place for good. Repair Piercy Poodle. The main character and the mascot of this location, all we need to do is fix Percy. So let's do that. Opening up Percy lets us see his battery, which once again involves a mini game for us to get through. Slowly breaking open each layer of this quote unquote malfunctioning battery for us to finally be able to get to the third part, where all we need to do is cause a power meter to reach its max. And that's it, right? 
Well, after we get this done, we get one more phone call, once again from the boss. This animatronic is pretty important, so with us basically overheating the battery, we are told to find a spare. And since we can't find a spare around us, the least we could do is attempt to find a substitute. With the pal Percy beeping like crazy, that gives us an idea. Why don't we just put the pal Percy inside and use that as a battery? I mean, it could work, so why not? Surprisingly, it does in fact function and the game ends. We aren't able to find out what happens next, but we know a couple of things. Like how pal Percy having something wrong with them due to that video we watched earlier, with us not really knowing what exactly was wrong with it. But for the beginning premise of a game such as this, I can't wait to see what exactly could happen next. The creator probably has plans of creating a new project soon, hopefully, so we can- Okay, so not exactly the end yet. We somehow escape whatever that was and end up with some sort of storage area. So with our original pal Percy going rogue and essentially trying to trap us here forever, we instead have to use this early model pal, since why would we ever get skeptical that this other thing could be evil as well? The idea of a boss fight is surprisingly common within FNAF fan games, but this is one of the best examples of one since it generally felt like an actual boss fight that was challenging and not just a new animatronic being shown. A lot of the time, these quote unquote boss fights would mostly comprise of a combination of all the previous animatronics put into one, but that's not what happens here. Instead, we get dropped off in a new area with whole new mechanics that we suddenly need to pick up and somehow survive while playing with this new toy. Let's talk about this new model pal before anything else. The previous minigames were swapped out for three new ones, which are the shape matching puzzles, a maze, and some fishing. There is some strategy to this section that involves this device, most notably how annoyingly long the fishing minigame actually is. The first two are relatively quick, so you need to focus on trying to complete these first before you're locked out of them. Then do the fishing minigame twice before being able to go back to the quicker ones once again. Now, remember how I said this whole game's gimmick was that it was goal based? Well, that's even more important here, as in the corner, you probably see the X number out of 5 charges. What this means is that every time we hit the goal in the model PAL, the boss fight will change. Either bringing in new enemies or creating new mechanics. So let's talk about that right now, with us starting off with PAL. Something that I adore about this specific design is a Percy Poodle animatronic isn't the boss, but rather the pal Percy toy that we were playing with this whole time, as it's poking out of its chest, mutating, spreading these weird black tentacles all around it, almost like a parasite. I have a morbid fascination with parasites in general, which is why I love The Last of Us so much, and seeing the different ways horror media can try to incorporate those kinds of things within their gameplay is amazing. Now, I won't explain every single change in gameplay for all the animatronics, but instead we'll just be introducing them one by one and talking about their biggest mechanics. Something I absolutely adore about these newer animatronics as well, wait my bad, Paltronics as that's what the wiki calls them, they all have similar names as they're very much based on a Tamagotchi toy. Tamalanki, Tamabruti, Tamaopti, Tamarochi, and that's not even talking about the corrupted poodles that we need to watch out for from time to time. Throughout the night, we need to juggle using the camera systems, looking within the office, and finishing up the minigames. Something you'll probably very much notice is how we're supposed to get through 5 whole charges. It's almost as if we're playing a whole new FNAF game and each charge is kind of like a whole new night. Well, you could try to beat this whole thing without losing once, and I doubt someone is able to do that, but after each charge, we'll have access to a checkpoint, so if we mess up, we'll be able to go back to the beginning of that specific charge to try again as many times as we need to. 
Thankfully, there's a tip box that shows up every single time we make it to a new section to let us know what we need to do and basically give us a breather for that specific section since it is a lot. I don't typically like tip boxes within games since it removes all immersion in my opinion, but here with the cartoonish style and the comedic elements presented, I don't feel as though this affected me in a really negative way, so it gets a pass. After making it to their fourth charge, our pal Percy that we've gone close with gives us a little speech. A couple of things. The music, this whole time, was an absolute banger. It only gets better. It was amazing before, but with the start of the pal Percy getting into the cameras in the office and laughing at us, this whole section just felt like a whole big go screw yourself from the devs to say yeah, I made this part incredibly hard, so what? I hated and loved that aspect that it was almost laughing directly at us for struggling. If it was just a laughing at us the entire time, I feel as though this would have been quite annoying, but it's the fact that the laugh gets incorporated within the soundtrack that makes this part absolutely amazing. It's a troll, 100%, but it's an effective way to piss off the player in a way that they want to beat pal Percy to wipe its smile away. With the final charge, we get pal coming directly to our face multiple times in order for it to try to mess with us again, which was really well made since it would get mad at us if we made it through. After a long and grueling fight, we make it. We finally did it. We were able to survive this onslaught of Paltronics, but once we make it to the final charge, it isn't completely over. For the next 60 seconds, we simply need to survive. I love this part as it felt like a callback to the original FNAF formula of just trying to survive the night. As the time slowly progresses, the screen gets darker and we finally did it. We finally did it and we make it to the final true cutscene.
and the true credits hit. Wow. Out of any FNAF fan game I've ever played, this one was definitely the most difficult so far, but also one of the most enjoyable. This wasn't a particularly scary game at all and was trying to lead into a much more comedic side, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. In fact, its art style was something that gave this game so much of its charm, with its animation especially at the end. I would 100% recommend this game for others to play as it was something you could only truly experience for yourself. Just be prepared to lose your mind. You'll really feel satisfied after beating it though and seeing Pal's smile disappearing. I guarantee that. It was especially genius the way it would exceed expectations by not only making a fake ending twice, I feel, the first time being the first credits, with the second time being the lights dimming when we make it after the second charge. That part made me think that there was going to be something more, and made me even stressed out and probably the part where I was kind of scared the most. What would be next from this game developer? But once it finally ended, the relief I felt was amazing. This truly was an experience unlike any other. What's even more surprising is I've never even heard this creator before, Fuzzy Funbear, and checking out their other works, it seems that they only have two other games, which seem to be the Banana Split series. Other than that, I'm unsure if they might make a sequel to a specific game since it ended with the whole building being destroyed. Whatever their future holds, I am extremely excited to see what else they could come up with. All in all, Playtime with Piercy is a really weird game. With its visuals, its game design, the way it would present itself, I never once thought that this game felt repetitive at all, as every time a new feature would get presented, it would kind of get complemented by the older mechanics. And especially with the boss fight, it was one of the best I've ever seen. I don't think any other FNAF fan game is ever going to be able to top that specific boss fight in terms of creativity, the way the mechanics all jumbled up together, the difficulty, it just felt perfect. Like I said, Playtime with Piercies is a really weird game, but a FNAF game that is unlike any other. Fun, charming, and mind-numbingly difficult. 10 out of 10! If you like this video, like and subscribe. Leave a comment on something you thought was pretty cool. In the meantime, I'm extremely tired for talking for so long. So I'm going to go take a nap. Peace.